name is Amber Watkins. Um, I'm in Dallas, Texas. I ran into this lady in the store, and uh, I got her testimony a little bit. Um, I've been a prostitute. I was a prostitute for a long time, on drugs for a long time, drank a lot. Um, in January of 2019, been in and out of jail, prison my whole life. From uh, starting at what age? Let's see, the age of 14, 15. You started at 14 and 15 years old? Yes, ma'am, going in and out of- uh, how, how was your childhood? I would say it was good. My grandparents, they raised me. Um, what was, was your mom? Childhood. What was your mom and dad? My granddad, like, he had a lot of hidden stuff that I didn't know till I got older. A lot of secrets? A lot of secrets, yes. Um, started doing drugs with me at a young age. What age? Uh, 15. With your granddad? I know that some have started younger, but my granddad, yes. What kind of drugs would you guys uh, do together? Crystal meth. At 15. At Were 15. you nervous the very, very first time? No, he said, get your homework done. I don't want to get my homework done. Not at all. And then when I smoked weed at the age of 11. So I thought I found what I was doing. Because it felt so good. Drink and get high. At and a I've younger age. Ecstasy. I've used a lot of drugs. When would you start doing ecstasy? When was I'd your first say about time? the age of 15, 16. Cocaine, fish scale, um, straight drop. Eventually it led to crack, yada, yada, yada. I used to go to rave parties. Not gonna put anybody's bounce names up in there. At the age of 18, I started dancing because I had warrant after warrant after warrant, and I would jump on mega buses and just go where the wind blew me, so to say. Which that's really the Holy Spirit. I'll get down to all that. But, um, so I jump on the mega bus, go from state to state, started dancing in clubs. Um, Danced at a club one night, made about, I say about not much money, three, almost $400. Did a date, what they call a date, for $300. That, I was addicted, so to say. And I started prostituting. Um, How did you feel when you were prostituting? Well, at first I liked it because it was quick money. It was quick money. I could get away from the police. I was running from the police. Little did I know it would lead up to me running from Jesus. Yeah. Uh, the calling on my life that I still struggle with and still am running from in a way. Where's your mom? My mom, she's at her home in Mississippi. Uh, what kind of relationship do you guys have? We have a very good relationship now. When we talk, she's very loving. She uh, has accepted me when other people didn't because of my charges. Uh, stuck by me in and out of prison. She still has faith in me even though I've been in and out of prison my whole life. Why you know, a lot you of people home? give up on people. Why yeah. won't you go home with her? Um, I can, but she works two jobs. Her husband works two jobs. And they don't have an Uber. She lives in the country. They don't have an Uber. They don't have a taxi. They don't have a bus system. It's, it's so the country. I'm eating her food. I'm 38 years old, I'd be eating her food. I would be having to get her to run me back and forth to work when my oldest daughter is in college now. Like, no, she would have to go out of her way to take care of a grown woman, so to say. Not that I'm truly grown, because being grown is being grown in Christ. Right, right, being right, right. Making the right decisions. Right. And so being why myself. do I want to put that burden on them? And they've worked hard their whole life, you know. My mom has worked hard her whole life and loved me through my BS, so to say. But my testimony for me is January of 2019, I've been in and out of jail my whole life. I was in the stair and I went to church. Seeds were being planted each time I went to the penitentiary. But I went to Luke stair and the Holy Spirit came on me like I had never felt in my life. Like I was praising God, even the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's true. It's uncontrollable praise. Like it's so much that I want to say. I don't even know how to like get all this out. But 
So, and at this point, I was hearing voices in my head. The world will diagnose you. The psychiatrist will diagnose you as schizoaffective, schizophrenic, bipolar, depression, anxiety. Those are all demonic spirits. Even in they the are. New Testament, you see, don't you? You're smart. Even in the New Testament, God's given me revelation, and I've been through it personally. But even in the New Testament, the ones that had demons in them, that Jesus cast the demons out, they act just the same as the babies today that there's no hope for, like me. When I was hearing voices, when I lost my mind, when God restored it. Jesus Christ, there's only one way to God, it's through Christ. I know that too, and I'm going to give you that for you. So... The Holy Spirit comes over me, but okay, I go back to the pod, and I've been in and out of jail so many times that the officers, they know me. They realize something's not right with me. I'm hearing voices. I had demons in me. Schizoaffective, right? She's like, why can't, what's wrong with you? They sent me to the nurse's station. The nurse said, if you, the only thing that was bringing me comfort was talking about Jesus. I wanted to share, like, what I just felt, and, and, and his love, and that with our heart that we're sitting with the Holy Spirit we're saved we can live forever for eternity and she said if you say one more thing about Jesus I'm putting you on suicide watch I kept talking about my Jesus guess what she put me on suicide watch in a matter of a moment like that it's like somebody that gets shot and actually dies you know it happens like that just like it's like if you've lost people in your life and you talk to them you know like dang I just talked to you Demon went in me, 
do, it would talk and it wouldn't be my voice. And if you got fearful enough in this life, you've heard babies, that it's not really them. It's demons in that person. You know what I'm saying? That and there's a whole precious person because I'm precious to God. We all are. But so at this point, I'm paralyzed in fear. I heard what sounded like my two oldest daughters say, Mommy, Mommy, the flames are fixing to touch us. So I snap out of it. I try to hit my knees and cry out to God. And God showed me, you're just trying to get out of this situation as usual. When I took my heart to him, though, he put his hand down. He wasn't water blaze, one race, the human race. It was this transparent light. And he said, my child, the whole world is dark. No, 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 no. He said, I'm sorry. That was when he walked me on the water. He said, I never left nor forsook you. You turned from me. And that goes for all of us. People say, well, how can a God do this and that? We turn from him. He never turns from us. He's always there with arms wide open no matter what we've done. Yes, we do have to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Me too. Because just the gossip is just the same as murder. For me to get high, which I have, is just the same as murder. You know, it's the same as child molestation. It's demonic spirits and sin opens up doors for that. And if you dealt with people with demons like my eight, when I was 18, my baby daddy had a murder spirit in him. I didn't know about prayer. I just knew it was something evil and I'm not going to go into all of it. But I go to the hospital. Had to get, They popped the door. I'm spitting blood on the police. One of them said, let her bleed out. The other one said, not on my watch. Thank God. They were abusing me because they thought that I was crazy and had lost my mind. Um, there's a lot that are in there now. If anybody does see this, pray for the ones that lose their, the officers. Because there's a lot that they just think are crazy and they know what's going on. Just like these babies that have murder spirits. Some people want to believe now that all this is going on. Some people think that mafia is the enemy. Some people think cartel is the enemy. No, that's not the enemy. Satan is. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So I go to the hospital. I get 19 staples in the back of my head. And if you want to, you can see all the scars. And there's one place where my hair won't even grow back. I get back there. I start seeking. They start running up to me. And they're talking about simple things. Because we're in jail. A lot of street people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm literally shaking like this. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Everybody started persecuting me and talking about me. Except one lady, she said, Mo! She said, come here, let me pray for you. She had been through something similar. She knew that I wasn't crazy. She started praying for me. I started seeking with my whole heart. And I wept for like eight days straight. And God was showing me me and how wicked I am. And it's for me to go into his presence because he's so holy all of our hearts are wicked even jeremiah something tells you that without god anything good in us is god we're all wicked and people are the enemy but after i went through it even says somewhere and i'm not quoting this right and i know the word is serious the word is god in the flesh christ those that don't know Christ are those that haven't sought with their whole heart. But God showed me my worth after that. And no matter what anybody's done, they're worthy. The only way to God is through Christ. That's how I got up out of that pit when I was there near burning. I had to go through Christ. People go by what they're taught can't do that you have to seek with your heart and that's all I can say and I still mess up but I love I have had demons in me and God delivered me I had to keep speaking the word over myself I was taking all these medicines the psychiatrist will diagnose you this and that but a lot of them haven't personally been through it they might mean well and I think some of them just want a dollar really to be honest because you see babies that are weighed down by demons on a daily on the streets at these shelters they have demons in them and they're steadily feeding them medication. Have you went to see your mental health doctor? Well, have you prayed over them? Have you uh, been fasting and praying to lay hands on them to cast the demons out of them? Because they're obviously laying here and the medication that you've been giving them is not working. And you obviously don't care about them enough to daily ask them if they've even took their pill. God told me to quit putting my faith in a pill and put my faith in him. And that's what I did. And I kept speaking the word of my, over myself. And I kept praying. And I don't hear voices in my head. I wept mine out. But I believe that there's some that hear so many voices they couldn't even comment.
concentrate on this because of how I got it. to hear how to do it. That's why it takes a lot, a lot of prayer. So what would you say? To trust Christ. Um, and even the ones that don't believe, love them more. Um, edify each other, lift each other up, don't tear each other down no matter what anybody's done. And when you see somebody in need, help them because the things of this world don't matter.